This is exactly right. My the favorite. <laughs> we were murder, murder the mini. The mini sewed. <laughs> Quit it. <laughs> the whole time we do that. Just speak at the same time, but we're guessing. Mm-hmm. Poor, I bet we could do it. it. Yeah. Let's not. Let's do it. No, let's not. No, let's not. Um, um. <laughs> <laughs> I turned it around on you. Okay, this is the th- we read you shit. Here we go. Karen. Are you ready? Karen, do you want to go first? Um Hey, do you want me to go first? I'd love yes, please go. Would first. you love it if I went first I, is the way I should have asked? Yeah. Would you love this? <laughs> the subject line of this is dispatchers help catch a murderer on the run. Yeah. Dear Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and colleagues. Mm. I love it. Mm-hmm. I was a dispatcher in a local city for about 10 years. During that time, we took so many crazy calls, but one really sticks out for me. A woman had been killed execution style in the parking lot of an apartment complex by her estranged boyfriend. This happened overnight and her boyfriend fled the scene and went to another city. He ended up calling our dispatch center and was playing the concerned boyfriend card (sighs) asking about her status. Apparently he didn't know that she actually died out of nowhere. I just came up with an idea to tell him that I couldn't release any information on her medical condition, but I would transfer him to the hospital where she was and let him to speak to the nurse in charge. I placed him on hold <gasps> and told my fellow dispatcher to be the charge nurse. Can you do, is this legal? Who knows? And I would transfer the, this guy to him. Uh-huh. I think first, if you start by m- murdering your oh, girlfriend. Right, right. How about if you call 911, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. Uh, be be warned. Right. Okay. My fellow dispatcher did a fucking amazing job of getting information from this guy and convinced him to come back to our city to see his girlfriend in the hospital. Mm-hmm. The other dispatcher working that night was my best friend and she was coordinating our responses. To make a very long story short, we had our officers waiting for him at the hospital and he was arrested. Wow. We got commendations from our lieutenant for the quick thinking and the work we put in that night. So yeah, it's legal. Um, it was such a great feeling knowing we had a small part in getting this guy off the streets. I'm no longer in law enforcement, and I don't know what happened to that guy in court, but it's still one of my proudest moments. Stay sexy and don't be an idiot murderer and an overall shitty person. <laughs> <laughs> That's our new tagline. <laughs> it's time for a change. Stay sexy and don't be an idiot murderer uh-huh. and an overall shitty person. Thanks for all you guys do, Amy. <gasps> wow, that's incredible. <clears throat> that's the best. Good job. Are you good at like if someone's like pretend to be this? I I couldn't do it. Um, I guess it just depends. I mean, like, I think I'd be okay at it, but I have that thing where like, even if it was something just like a real life thing, mm-hmm. like I'd want to be a really good. I would want people to think I did good acting, and mm-hmm. then I'd overthink it and be bad. Overdo it. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't. I would start giggling even if it was serious because I <laughs> just can't. <laughs> do shit like that um okay this one's a little long so i'm gonna go first with it uh reason 101 why you shouldn't ever scare the shit of your out of your grandma mm. light-hearted <laughs> hi kgs and fur so back in the day uh-huh. <laughs> you hate it uh so back in the day ever since i can remember my sister and i loved to hide and jump out and scare the shit out of our grandma <laughs> god rest her soul Yes. And before being judged, she would do the same to us. Yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah, grandma. Oh my God. I know. So very weird. However, it was just one of the many crazy things we did with our grandma since she was quite the character. One day, my sister was at my grandma's house waiting for her to get dropped off by my mom. Um, she had been in the front of the house and had come to the back where she heard my grandma fumbling with her key in the lock at the door. She then got the fantastic idea, you guessed it, to scare the shit out of my grandma. She crept as quietly as she could, grabbed the inside door handle, (laughs) and even bent over at the waist so she could be eye level with her and get her real good. Then, as swiftly as she could, she turned the handle really fast, threw the door open, and still crouched, screamed at the top of her lungs, Boo! (laughs) However, to her ever-living fucking horror, it was not my grandmother. Oh, it was a creepy man with a screwdriver that was trying to pick the lock. Oh, fuck. I don't know how old the, the sister was, but I'm I picturing mean, she's seven, a drop off nine. Age. Yeah. Yeah. Ten. Uh, yeah. Eleven. 
They Twelve. Were, <laughs> they were literally an inch away from each other. And mind you, face to face since he was bent over hard at work, breaking into the door to get into the damn house. She said they both froze for what seemed like five minutes, but was probably, but in all probability, about probably about five seconds. <laughs> he was so shocked and equally horrified that this crazy bitch screamed boo in his face <laughs> that he dropped the screwdriver, fell backwards, couldn't get it fast enough because he kept tripping and took off around the corner of the house and down the driveway in a mad dash. <sighs> My sister was so shaken up obviously that it took her several minutes to move close the door and lock it and dial the rotary phone for help Uh, yes we're old yes (laughs) we shudder to think what could have happened Uh, i mean too many ways this fucking story could have ended and i uh, could be telling y'all about it in an entirely different way we never found out who it was or caught him but we were uh, we also wonder if this could have possibly been his fucking wake-up call to never try that again yeah lesson learned from the boo screaming bitch my sister (laughs) Uh, can't wait to see you guys in Houston in May. Stay sexy. And for God's sake, don't fucking play such a terrifying game of scaring the shit out of your grandma ever. <laughs> Thanks for everything y'all doing. Y'all rock. Susan. Susan. <laughs> that was amazing. Yes. I love also. Yeah. It's that it's the argument of like not every not every person breaking into your house is like brave and psychotic right. some of them are just like desperate and scared as scared as you are and but that sh- doesn't matter don't interact right with right, them. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't offer them coffee don't they're not better than you because yeah. they're breaking into your house are they brave no they're terrified you're too. as creepy as they are you're the bravest person we've ever met go and c- the creepiest person yeah Go creep somebody else out. Go show them. Yeah. (laughs) But you take two screwdrivers with you. Yeah. Don't do any of this. (laughs) Okay. I won't redo the subject line of this. I just learned something interesting tonight after playing board games for the evening with my parents, husband and son. I can't believe I'm learning this at 39. Apparently, when I was two years old, my dad was nearly arrested for robbing a bank. (gasps) He was at a gas station when a police officer approached him and told him he had to accompany him for a trip to the police station. My dad is the most passive kind elementary school teacher man on the planet (laughs) um and and gladly obliged once at the station he was handed a few photographs and asked who does this look like my sweet angel father laughed and said well that looks like me oh my god (laughs) what was the picture you ask it was a man robbing the local bank oh my dad of course explained it wasn't him and then gave an alibi unfortunately that alibi was nearly useless as he was getting a haircut at my great aunt's house oh my god what made matters worse was they checked his bank accounts and it showed he'd just moved all of his funds to an out-of-state bank. Dude. You see, my mom, pregnant with my brother, and I had just moved to Tacoma, Washington, where we were waiting on my dad to wrap up his side business of family portraits in Idaho. So it looked like he had moved his family, closed his business, robbed a bank, and was leaving <laughs> town to start over. Mm, in the end, he was... a bad plan, really. <laughs> right? Um, in the end, he was only saved because he grew up with the judge that was asked to sign the warrant and the judge laughed and said that's ridiculous there's no way that could be bill eventually they did catch the real bank robber thank goodness because my dad was instructed not to leave town until it was resolved he said he suffered some pretty sweaty palms for a while but that it was all worth it for the cash dad jokes (laughs) oh dad jokes yeah Stay sexy and don't tell the police you look like a bank, the bank robber, Rachel. Well, that looks like me. <laughs> Why? Oh, I know the answer. Oh, hey, isn't that weird? <laughs> What's this all about, officer? <laughs> um, let's see here. I have two grandpa stories. Mm. Let's do, um, okay, let's do this one. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Craft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. 
I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner. And that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home. And that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go by. No, let's see this one. Hola, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and fur friends. My name is uh, Denora, and I'm originally from Puerto Rico, but I've been living in Nashville, Tennessee since 2010. Hola. Hola. Que tal? My, my mom and I were leaving a Pilates class and listening to a mini-sode when she revealed that my paternal grandfather went to prison for murder. Oh. Back in the late 70s, my grandfather was a low-level drug dealer in Puerto Rico, and one day he noticed that a weird car had passed by his house a couple times. All of a sudden, the people from inside that car started shooting into my grandfather's house. Inside were my dad, his siblings, and his mom. Mm. My grand- grandfather took a gun from his illegal gun stash and started shooting. Yeah, I bet he did. Unfortunately, he ended up killing an innocent bystander that was trying to shield himself from the gunfire. Oh, God. My grandfather ended up being charged with involuntary homicide because he refused to name the people who were shooting at him. Well, but that's... Holy shit. Snitch is good. Smart. Yeah, that's right. Um, my grandfather ended up going to jail with serial murderers in La Princesa prison, which is located inside the El Moro fort in Puerto Rico. I'm sure it's a lovely place to summer. Well, that's where they imprison all the princesses. <laughs> you know. La Princesa. Uh, he recounted the stories of how prisoners would murder each other and cut people in pieces and hide them in walls. No! In prison? It, pieces of people in prison walls. No. <laughs> That's, no. that's, so this is basically a murder and finding things in the wall story. <laughs> it's the worst one yet. Yes. Um, he did eventually get out through drug court and est- and helped establish a drug, re- rehabit- a drug rehabilitation program that I'm sorry, I'm high on drugs. Uh, <laughs> That is still going on today. Because oh. he recovered and never committed a crime again, he got an official pardon from the governor of Puerto Rico. My grandfather died in 1995 due to liver cancer from his drug addict days. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was two when he died, so I don't remember that much about him. So imagine my surprise when my mom revealed this to me while leaving a fucking Pilates class. <laughs> I absolutely love the podcast and think y'all are, are hilarious. It's good to know I'm not the only person who finds murder interesting. SSDGM Denora. Denora, that was really good. God, that's sad. And then like, there's redemption. Yeah, you're up, you're down. But that's that fucking thing about like, you know, sh- shooting. The Gun- 70s. Guns are bad and they kill innocent people. That's right. That, it, and that sucks. Okay. This one is simply entitled Weird Milk Boy. <laughs> I'm on board. (laughs) I'm here for this. Lighthearted. Hi, MFM crew. Once upon a night of chilling at my apartment after work, I heard a knock at my door. It was around 1030 p.m. and I wasn't expecting anyone. I was too much of a couch potato at that point that I just stayed sitting and thought they'll go away. (laughs) Uh After a few seconds, I heard another knock. This time it was louder. (laughs) Internally grunting, I went to the door and looked through the people, vaguely recognizing this guy. I knew he had lived in the same apartment complex because we had once had a fire alarm go off at 3 a.m. and had walked down the hallway together. We probably exchanged a total of five words, though, and I didn't know his name or anything. I, for some reason, decided to open the door. No, no. He had an uncapped soda cup in his hand filled with water, and he asked me, can I have some milk? What? I replied with, uh, and he said, you can just fill half the cup. (laughs) At this point, my heart was beating fast because, one, this is technically a complete stranger asking me for something weird, and two, it was somewhat late at night, and I'm a small female who lives alone. At this point, I started panicking, thinking, what if he tries to break into my apartment, or is he trying to scan my apartment so he can come attack me later? In any case, I grabbed the cup, closed my door, stupidly didn't lock it, Mm. poured out the water, poured in some milk, opened the door, handed it back to him, then he smiled and walked away, and I never saw him again after that. I guess he just really needed some milk and I was the lucky target. I told I told the story to my coworkers who ended up lecturing me on never opening doors for strangers, which I obviously know now. <laughs> they also taunted me for a while asking, "Hey Mary, can I have some milk?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one doing that voice. I, I, I thought it was exactly of, like a fun that. way. I'm glad it ended the way it did though. Mary. 
<laughs> oh, Mary. Sweet, innocent Mary. <laughs> Stay sexy and don't give milk to strangers. Sorry, okay. that was on the second page. Milk, oh, Mary. Mary. I love that because, yeah, don't ever fucking open your door no matter who it is. I know, like, you think that's not a stranger because I've seen him before. But if you're a girl, a woman alone in an apartment, you don't need to answer the door to even, like, a friend who's a no. dude if it's late at night and there's no reason for them to be there. No, not at all. You know? Um, yeah. And then if you think it's a situation where you're fine, definitely if you're going to grab the cup, lock the door behind you. But I feel like that's where the politeness, I get that because that's where the politeness comes in yes, where you're like, I don't want to be rude and lock the door. Yes. So you don't, but you know, right. Then we're, you're fucked. So just don't even answer the door. Well, and also there's a, there's a bit of a manipulation playing on that like neighborly, oh, can I just borrow a yeah. cup of sugar thing, which is really weird. And like, no, whatever you yeah. need milk for, you can have it in the morning. Yeah. And who drinks milk anymore? What? So, kind of haven't you ever heard of lactate yeah non-dairy fucking <laughs> everything okay uh this one is called grandpa interrupts a police helicopter chase <laughs> in the, hello all in the 80s my grandparents my mother and her three siblings lived in a suburb of la in a not so great area my grandfather a portly syrian immigrant who loves scotch <laughs> was and is super paranoid about being murdered and was always rushing to the door to see what was going on with sirens and such sure one summer evening my mom and her siblings were uh, swimming in their backyard pool when someone scales their fence and jumps into their backyard oh. it's a woman who is seriously high and twitchy and she stands there staring at them they all tread water and wonder what the fuck to do oh, no then they hear sirens on the street and a fucking helicopter swoops over their neighborhood Mom and her siblings run inside, soaking wet, and watch through the windows as the strange woman runs into the front yard. My mom says there are cops all over the street with guns drawn, and the trees around my house are literally whipping with the wind from the helicopter. Uh, it is... <laughs> It is at this point that my grandpa, in nothing but his very tight 1980s swim bottoms, walks into the front yard to see what's going on. <laughs> he literally walked into a helicopter chase. My mom says that at least 10 cops, all with their guns pointing at him, started screaming, Sir, go inside. <laughs> My grandpa, not one to be told what to do on his own property, That's right. remained on the lawn until the woman had been tackled. He's a taxpayer, goddammit. <laughs> this is my lawn. I pay these property taxes. That's right. To this day, we ask him what exactly he thought he was going to accomplish by walking into a into guns drawn situation. And he always replies, goddammit, I had to see what was going on. <laughs> Grandpa. Scotch. Stay sexy and don't interrupt helicopter chases, Liz. <laughs> God damn it. I wanted to see what was going on. Um, uh, send us your weird stories about your grandparents or helicopter chases or milk, milk stories. Whatever it takes. Whatever happens. <laughs> Tell us. We can love I, it. Uh, can I have some milk? Um, my favorite murder at Gmail. And stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, you want a cookie? <laughs>